Hello, everyone. Dr. Victoria Skirbo here, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Sign for Tarascopes. We're going to be doing the Tarascopes for the sign of Taurus. That's Taurus Sun, Taurus Moon, Taurus Rising for the month of May. Your month, Taurus. The sun is in Taurus in the month of May. We also have Venus in Taurus, at least starting. Um, am I correct about that? No, actually, we have. Sorry, we have Venus in Gemini moving into Cancer. Sorry about that. Here we go. Moving into Cancer on the 7th. Um, so your ruling planet moves into a sign known for its sensitivity, its emotionality, its security mindedness. So you might find yourself even more security minded than you normally are. We do have Pluto changing directions right at the beginning of May. It is still at that first degree of Aquarius. It never quite gets out of that first degree of Aquarius. Um, but we have plenty of time uh, later in our lives when um, Pluto's in Aquarius for 20 years. It's going to look very different <laughs> in that period of time. But we're getting little inklings. Now, not only is Pluto changing direction this month, but Mercury is as well significant for you because Mercury has been in Taurus. And uh, so you're a Taurus with a Mercury retrograde in Taurus. It's been retrograde since the end of last month. And uh, it turns direct on the uh, fifth. It turns direct on the um, 14th, 14th. And uh, it is in Taurus all month, uh, retrograde till the 14th and then direct. It doesn't actually get out of its shadow of its retrograde until uh, June. We also have uh, Jupiter, which is as the as the month starts is in the last degrees of Aries. It was a very active uh, journey through Aries, especially uh, last month uh, when we had um, an Aries Chiron, um, Aries, a Jupiter Chiron conjunction that only happens, I think every 14 years starting a new synodic cycle, the expansion of healing of the self, of the identity of the toxic masculine. We could talk all about that, all kinds of themes like that. Um, but um, so now it moves into Taurus and it does that on the 16th, the 16th of May, uh, Jupiter moves into Taurus. And so for you, Taurus, that's good because Jupiter brings opportunity. Uh, it, it sort of, it's the greater benefic, so it can bring more of something. Now it depends, it's not always all good news, um, but um, it brings an understanding and it's gonna be there for a year. So we have plenty of time with, uh, with, uh, um, Jupiter in, in Taurus. We'll learn lessons about the Earth and our relationship to the Earth, Taurus. Um, so the interesting thing is with Pluto standing practically still most of the month, it's retrograde, but it moves slowly back and it goes back out of uh, Aquarius the 11th of uh, June. While that's slowly, slowly moving back, we have uh, we have Jupiter moving into Taurus, which is which squares uh, that North Node, and and I mean that Pluto, and that square is a crisis in action square, a crisis in action square. It's about building foundations, and with Jupiter and Taurus, perhaps those foundations deal with uh, uh, finances, money, resources, resourcefulness. Um, and just general resources, food, and 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 uh, and the things that keep us alive, and of course, you know, there's so much, there's so many wars going on, and in in uh, places where we would normally, um, like in the Ukraine, where uh, much of the I think the uh, grain from for um, for the Middle East, which is suffering, of course, because they were destabilized by. Uh, the United States, you know, and, and other in, in Russia and, you know, whoever the big, the big people, they decided they were going to like mess around and, and there, um, you know, so 
everything is really seems to be in an uproar and a, and a chaos. And, and when we have this square, um, that's going to come out even more. And then, of course, Mars moves into Leo, which opposes Pluto and squares Jupiter. And this is all happening at the nodes. So you're going to feel like you're at a crossroads. This, this We're all going to feel like that. But you're going to feel it especially strongly because it's dealing with your planets. And we do have a full moon lunar eclipse at the 15th degree of Scorpio. Uh, so the sun is at the 15th degree of um, Taurus. Those are world points. This is when things in world change, shift, big changes and big shifts in power, in uh, in resources, in, in uh, um, there's a shifting of the power dynamic. And we can't take the idea that, the, you know, that um, uh, with Pluto and Aquarius, the power of the people uh, will be expressed. Now, as it goes back into Capricorn, there'll probably be more oppression and repression of that. But eventually when it does go into Aquarius and stays there for 20 years, that's when I think we're really gonna see um, ourselves, the, the voice of the people being heard. What that's exactly gonna mean, I don't know. Um, I don't know, <laughs> but it's gonna be amazing. So what I wanna say is that this month for you, Taurus, it's gonna feel pretty stressful. Um, you're going to feel like you're at a crossroads. Decisions have to be made. Perhaps you have to let go of something um, and um, and move in a new direction. Uh, but there is abundance in your future. So <laughs> um, while and of course Uranus is in Taurus, and and during this month we have the Sun and Uranus make uh, their conjunction in Taurus, and that happens on the ninth. So if you happen to have your birthday around the ninth, that means Uranus is on your Sun. Um, or around your sun. And so uh, it's significant. It's significant. And and Ur Uranus really, the energy of Uranus is to free us, is to free us from whatever prison we may be in. And it's not always a comfortable um, thing because sometimes we like the prisons we're in. We like the environment. We like the, the hovel that we might have created for ourselves. But sometimes there are greater things calling to you and you might find yourself in that situation. Have faith that it will all work out just fine. All right, that's what I want to say about Taurus. So let's take a look. We're going to look at, um, I'm going to first pick a, a, um, a an oracle card. I'm using the Soul Flower Plant Spirit Oracle by Lisa Esterbrook. Uh, in honor of the fact that, you know, Taurus season is when everything starts to bloom, at least here where I live. And uh, I figured let's have the plants give us some advice. So this is from Taurus. This is uh, what Taurus uh, needs to be aware of and work with. What does the plant oracle have to say for Taurus? It'll be interesting to see if it reflects some of the astrology. Here we go. Echinacea, consciousness. Ooh, I like this. All right, I will uh, show it to you in a minute. Let me just find it here. <clears throat> here we go, right there. Ganesha stimulates and awakens your consciousness, help, helping break up and release outdated personal stories, emotions, and attachments that are holding you back from positive growth and self-realization. The awakening awareness of your true self when you have forgotten or lost connection. So that Echinacea is an herbal medicine primarily stimulates and supports our physical immune system energetically she stimulates and supports our awakening to greater levels of consciousness. Both aspects support a continual process of examining, breaking up and releasing the parts of ourselves and our stories that no longer serve us in our quest to define who we are. We are amazing, multifaceted, complex creatures and personal growth, uh, and, per and personal growth change is a dynamic process that is not necessarily logical to understand. Fear and pain feed our natural impulse to cling to familiar stories and aspects of ourselves. It is hard to let go of the accumulated baggage and trinkets that have manifested through our lives, unnecessary protection in the process of living. 
but the only but they only weigh us down as we try to grow. Instead of releasing them after they have outlived their usefulness, we tend to carry them around and then accumulate and get and they get heavier as time goes by. We could look at awakening consciousness like the biggest cleanup yard sale of our lives. To expand and grow, it is necessary to sort out the parts of ourselves defined by our egos that keep us small and unable to embrace growth and new potential. I told you. Okay, let's look at a deck here. I am going to, let's see, I guess I'll select this one. It's the closest at hand. This is the Tower of the Spirit, one of my personal favorites. And, uh, oh, excuse me, itchy nose. I think that means something, right? I'm going to get in a fight or something? Oh, I hope not. I don't like to fight. <laughs> what's the point? I mean, fight for justice. That's one thing. And fight for what's right. But just fight for ego reasons seems ridiculous. All right. Let's see what we have here. What do the cards have to say for Taurus for the month of May? In the merry, merry month of May, I was taken by surprise. By a pair of roving eyes, as I was walking through the park one day. Ready. Almost there, guys. Almost there. That's the one thing about May I'm not too thrilled about. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready. Let's see what we got here, folks. All right, we start with temperance, we start with healing. This is a time of spiritual initiation for you. Temperance is a card of healing, but it requires us to be temperate in our actions. It requires us not to get caught up in extremes. And it, and it requires us to walk the straight and narrow, despite the extremes around us. It really is about a connection of the lower self with the higher self, of letting go of any fear that you have around lack or abundance. Um, and if you let go of it, you won't ever have it again. This is really about getting into the flow of the heart and the, and the flow of love. Let's see what challenge is that. We have the father of water here. This can be conditioning. You know, fathers are often authoritarians or the, the person who makes the rules, at least traditionally, that is true. And even now men make the rules, right? And so we have men making the rules perhaps from a place of wanting to control uh, men making the rules from a place of uh, um, fear, perhaps, perhaps fear. So um, the challenge to our healing and our letting go and our aligning with our divine self uh, is the, is is a fear of, uh, and, and also it could be a fear of losing people that are dear to you, losing your family. Very often, you know, people who move along this more, uh, the evolutionary path when they're starting to break free from the conditions that most likely came from their culture or their family, their family doesn't take it well. And so it takes a brave person to be willing to stand outside of the, uh, the, the, the way things have always been to, uh, to want to change and to want to move forward. Let's see what's at the root of this. We have the brother of fire. This is the night of wants it's time for you to get moving. That's really the story. What's what what's going on is the, the brother of fire is is calling us to take our show on the road. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to get a little tiny out and go around the country. That's not what I mean. But to put yourself out there to 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 uh, be willing to get out of your comfort zone. Um, we have in the past, we have the Herophant. This is the Taurus card. So you know how things work. You know how to manifest. 
you, this is listening to your inner voice. Your inner voice has gotten you to this point uh, already. And so now we're being asked to move on um, and move on with the healing, right? In the sky, we have the sister of earth. This is the, the page of uh, pentacles. This is about new, it's about starting new things, new opportunities. There's new opportunities in the air for you, but it's startup. There might even be some startup money for you. I don't know if you're interested in something like that, but there are things available to you, but it is going to take a certain amount of um, effort on your part and maybe learning some new skills. That's that sister of earth is often learning new skills. And in the immediate future, we have the fire, uh, the father of earth. Now, this is a Capricorn energy. It's an energy of manifestation. The father of earth knows the value of things and knows how to manifest them. He knows how to um, hook into the flow of abundance. He knows he knows how to <clears throat> create uh, his manifest through there are ways to do it, right? There are ways to do it. Part of it has to do with your focus. You need to focus on what you want to bring into your life. And so pay attention to the things that you want to see, not the things that you don't want to see. Let's see. Um, this is how other people see you. They see you as courageous. Oh, how about that? Willing to stand up for what they believe. In your domestic situation, we have the, the, the brother of wind. Sometimes this can be somebody in your household that creates more chaos. Um, doesn't necessarily mean to create chaos, but because they're not, their head's not right. <laughs> they can create chaos <clears throat> or this can be impetuous action. So watch for that in your, in your home environment, watch for people who maybe want to create um, um, a kerfuffle just for the, just for that. You know, at the beginning of the reading, I said, I don't understand why anybody would fight for their own ego. I can see fighting for social justice, but maybe not for yourself. So this might be somebody in your immediate environment in your home or maybe where you work, that it's just one of these people who likes to make trouble. So be aware of that. Your hopes and fears, the sun, illumination. You want, you want abundance. You want the, you want to be in your garden. You want the sun to, to, to sort of warm your, warm your weary bones. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? You're hoping for illumination, and the outcome is the mother of fire. This is the queen of, of wands. She is uh, has dominion. She keeps the eternal flame lit. Um, she is the, the, the goddess of the hearth and the home. And so you don't have to go anywhere. Like this card says to me, you don't have, like I said, you don't have to get in a bus and go across the, across, go across the country. Um, but you take your spirit wherever you are. So wherever, wherever you are is your, is your home because your spirit is with you. Let's see if we can get a major arcana. We have the nine of cups. The seven, oops, the seven of earth. These cards indicate that you have a vision. It is not yet manifested on the physical plane. And it's, it's going to take a little bit more time for things to, to mature. So you can actually uh, pluck the fruits of your labor. And we have the seven of water. So there's a lot of confusion and the like, but no, no major arcanas. Let's see what's underneath it. We have the six of pentacles. This is about balancing the scales. It's also about peace and beauty and community. The mother of wind is uh, a person. This is an energy that is, is willing to say the hard things and, uh, and create um, not necessarily chaos, but change, but definitely change here. And then we have uh, the way of the cross, which is the 10 of, uh, what is it here? The 10 of swords in this deck, or is this the 10 of fire? Gemini, the 10 of swords. <laughs> I should, I should know this, right? I've had these cards for years. This is the end of a way of thinking. This is the end of a way of thinking. Mm -hmm. I can't help as I'm sitting here and looking at this thinking of, um, at the end of April, or just a few days ago, Tucker Carlson was uh, booted out of uh, Fox News, and he is a Taurus. He's got a sun and moon in Taurus. He's a new phase, got a new moon, uh, sun Taurus. And this is kind of, you know, this is kind of what happened to him. But it's really more about, that doesn't mean that's what's going to happen to you. But what it's really about is what ideas, what thoughts, what, what of that no longer serves 
and uh, it's time for you to uh, let it go so you can evolve and move on. All right. Well, that's what the cards say. I hope you find this helpful. Like and subscribe if you would. Give me a thumbs up or a, or a like, or maybe that's the same thing. Uh, if you're interested in having a reading with me, there's a link below. I do hour and hour and a half readings. If it's your first reading with me, then I suggest a 90-minute reading. If you can afford it, I do try to keep the readings uh, affordable. I do realize it is an investment, however. And um, the readings are um, your astrology, your Kabbalah, and your numerology. If you want to know what those readings look like, you can check out any of my astrology Kabbalah readings on any of the famous people. You can check that out on my on my YouTube channel. Um, and let's see, what else? And if you want to be a patron and you want to help support my work, if you find this helpful, um, then you can become a patron. There's a link below. Um, or whatever. I, would, I, I thank you for your attention. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for all the lovely words and gifts that you have sent me and uh, gifts of love and, uh, and support. It means, it means a lot to me. So uh, I will see you again next month. Take care. And uh, don't worry. Be happy.